doing for myself. For the most part, marriage did not work for Elizabeth Taylor. It was in 1950 that she married the first of her seven husbands, hotel heir Nikki Hilton. I was married a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> you were? Yep. But their marriage only lasted nine months. Elizabeth's journey to find true love began yet again. In 1952, Elizabeth married actor Michael Wilding. Taylor had two children with Wilding, but the couple split four years later. Just a few months after divorcing Wilding, Elizabeth married the man she called her first true love, Hollywood producer Mike Todd. We'd only had 13 months together, and I loved him with my life. But after only 13 months of marriage, Todd was tragically killed in a New Mexico plane crash. On Larry King Live, Elizabeth recalled the moment she heard the devastating news. And I just screamed. Todd's death, Elizabeth turned to his good friend, singer Eddie Fisher, for comfort. I never thought I'd love again. Their new relationship bloomed, even though Fisher was already married to Debbie Reynolds. Taylor and Fisher married in 1959. Forty-eight years later, at Elizabeth's 75th birthday party, Reynolds held no grudge. Whatever happened between Elizabeth and I many years ago has long passed. The union of Taylor and Fisher lasted five years. Elizabeth's affections for Fisher cooled considerably when she met the man who had become the second great love of her life, Richard Burton. I think having a fight, an out-and-out, outrageous, ridiculous fight, is one of the greatest exercises in marital togetherness. Especially if, uh, especially if you have no really weak points. Oh, I see. You see, you do not attack the weak points. They're perfectly obvious, and I'm just for myself. So when I insult Elizabeth, which I frequently do, I do not attack uh, that soft spot in the underbelly. She chin. attacks me, double chins. You bloody well have. Yeah, she's got a slightly fat belly. I never well, use those things. Well, I've got his pop marks, you know. This 1970 60 Minutes interview said it all. Taylor and Burton, without a doubt, the most dysfunctional marriage Hollywood has ever seen. They fought hard and they loved hard. And for the press, it was great theater. I wonder if uh, you've learned anything from Taylor. Well, uh, when we close the doors at night, it was on the set of their 1963 epic Cleopatra that Taylor fell madly in love with Burton, even though she was married to Eddie Fisher and Burton was married to wife Sybil Williams. Taylor and Burton's affair became tabloid fodder, and even the Vatican took a shot when it condemned Elizabeth for her erotic vagrancy. But as soon as the two divorced their spouses, Taylor and Burton wed on March 15th, 64. Is this something close to married love? The two starred in 11 films together in which they displayed the intense passion that they exhibited off screen. Their marriage was also filled with extravagant spending as well as emotional and explosive fights fueled by their heavy drinking and Burton's reported affairs. <laughs> their 1966 film, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, to see how highly charged these two could be with one another. So here I am, stuck with this, swamp this, bong in the history department, Martha. who's married to the president's the daughter, who's expected to be somebody messed up, a nobody, Virginia Woolf. Oh. But their fiery marriage proved to be too much for Taylor, so she and Burton divorced in 1974. But just one year later, they were back at it again. But this time, the marriage lasted only nine months. I will put up with a lot. But when finally the curtain falls, I'll still be friends. Close even after divorce, the two reunited on stage in a 1983 Broadway production of Private Lives. Burton died from a sudden cerebral hemorrhage in 1984. In an interview one year later, Elizabeth's face lit up at the mere mention of his name. Oh, I have so many memories. But they're mine.